Sabbath School Lesson 8 for November 16-22, to God and the Covenant, read by Dr. Percy Harold. Friday, November 22. From the book The Great Controversy, page 418, we read, The ministration of the earthly sanctuary consisted of two divisions. The priests ministered daily in the holy place, while once a year the high priest performed a special work of atonement in the most holy for the cleansing of the sanctuary. Day by day the repentant sinner brought his offering to the door of the tabernacle and placed his hand upon the victim's head, confessed his sins, thus in figure transferring them from himself to the innocent sacrifice. The animal was then slain. Without shedding of blood, says the apostle, there is no remission of sin. The life of the flesh is in the blood, we read in Leviticus 17.11. The broken law of God demanded the life of the transgressor, the blood representing the forfeited life of the sinner whose guilt the victim bore was carried by the priest into the holy place and sprinkled before the veil, behind which was the ark containing the law that the sinner had transgressed. By this ceremony the sin was, through the blood, transferred in figure to the sanctuary. In some cases, The blood was not taken into the holy place, but the flesh was taken to be eaten by the priest, as Moses directed the sons of Aaron, saying, God hath given it to you to bear the iniquity of the congregation, Leviticus 10.17. Both ceremonies alike symbolize the transfer of the sin from the penitent to the sanctuary. End of quote. And that brings us to our three discussion questions for this week. One, think about pledges you have made that you have broken, no matter how sincere and earnest you were in intending to keep them. What have you learned from that experience that perhaps can help keep you from making a similar mistake again? Two, covenant is a legal establishment of a relationship. We broke it with God, but He is always faithful to His part, even when we are not to ours. How can this understanding of God's goodness and faithfulness draw humans into a close relationship with Him, and thus help us live as we should? 3. Think of how many times you have been unfaithful to God and to promises we have under the new covenant. As we read in Luke 22, verse 20, Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And Hebrews 8, verse 13, In that he says, A new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. And Hebrews 9.15 And for this reason he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Why is it so important then? to understand the plan of salvation and the promise of forgiveness that we have because of the sacrifice of Jesus, whose blood sealed the new covenant for us. Inside Story Our mission story this week is titled Volleyball Evangelism, and it's by Wilson Mirsapogu. Man Bahandur Rai and his family believed that six spirits inhabited their home in a rural village near Nepal's border with China. Six clay pots were placed around the home for the spirits to live in. Whenever mother cooked a meal, she placed food into each pot for the spirits to eat. She feared that even if one spirit were forgotten, the whole family would suffer indigestion or worse. The parents wielded great influence in the village as the local spiritual leaders, and they hated Christianity, the belief in an unseen god. They preferred their visible gods of metal and wood. One evening, 18-year-old man was walking home after work and heard a male voice speaking about a virgin who had a child. Man wondered who was making such an illogical statement. 
He followed the voice to a building and saw a man reading from a black book. After the meeting, Mann argued with the man over his teachings. The man, a visiting Seventh-day Adventist pastor, simply smiled and invited the teen to return the next evening. After a week of meetings, Mann obtained a Bible and determined to prove it wrong. The more he read, however, the more he felt convinced that Jesus is the living God. He gave his heart to Jesus. Father was furious when Mann announced that he had become a Christian. He beat the teen and chased him from the village. Mother wept all night. In the morning, she asked a friend to find her son and give him a lamb. Mann accepted the lamb with joy and, after praying, felt a strong impression to sell it and buy a volleyball and net. Finding a piece of unused land between five villages, Mann set up the volleyball net and started to play. Soon, several young people passed by and asked if they could join him. Sure, Mann said, but you have to memorize one Bible verse. The young people eagerly memorized a verse and began to play. As they played, other young people stopped and memorized verses to join in. When the match ended, the young people pleaded to play again. OK, Mann said, but first you have to learn a song about my God. Before long, many had memorized whole Bible chapters and Christian songs. Then Mann heard that I would conduct a Bible school, and he shared his story on the first day. He introduced three young men seated nearby. This is the result of my volleyball evangelism, he said. These men have accepted Jesus and want to become Bible workers too. Man, who's seen on the left, who had been disowned by his family, is no theologian. He is a front-line worker, building a new family, who will live forever in God's kingdom. And the article was written by Wilson Mersapogo, who is Executive Secretary of the Seventh-day Adventist Church's Southern Asia Division. This week's lesson has been read by Dr. Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. It is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department, and through the services of Christian Services for the Blind. A video of this podcast also occurs on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.